Hey folks, I wanted to give you a run through of calculating hip jack rafters. So if you watched the last video on hip rafters, it's the same example here. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the hip jack and we're also going to look at the common difference. So once we figure out hip jack number one, we can then figure out hip jack number two and number three very quickly by figuring out how much the hip jacks kind of grow each time they go over 16 inches. Okay, so to start with, I just wanted to show you here. So this is a this is a 1012 roof. Okay, so we're using very important to note that a hip jack rafter is just a common rafter that doesn't run the same length, right? The, the hip jack gets interrupted by the hip rafter. So the hip rafter is sometimes called a hip ridge because it is kind of supporting these hip jacks. Now. The interesting thing about a hip jack is that the distance that we measure from the corner to the center, remember everything's to the center lines, the distance from the corner to the center of our hip jack is the same distance as it is from the edge of the wall to the center of the hip rafter. So that's how we get the run of our hip jack. So I'm just going to pull up a quick picture here. Uh, here we go. So the run from the corner to the center, that's the run of the hip jack. And then uh, you can see what common difference would be here. But so on our example, we said that this is 14 inches, which means that the run of the hip jack is 14 inches. So we treat this as a common rafter with a run of 14 inches, right? So it's, we're pretending like it's a really small little roof. Now it is important to note that the tail WP2 to WP3 is the same as the rest of the common rafters. We need it to be the same so that all of our tails will line up nice and straight. Okay, so that means when we did our math for our common rafter, we can just take that that same answer that we got for the tail of the rafter and just copy it for the hip jack. The thing that's going to change is that the hip jack runs a shorter distance. The the main common rafters run all the way to the center of the building. Okay. So we'll come back to this. So if we look here, uh, our main common rafters run half of that. That's like a, uh, 11 foot nine, right? It's half 23 foot six. So here we're only running 14 inches. We're significantly smaller. But let's look at our common rafter worksheet and we can, we can basically reuse this. Even though this is already filled out for the main common, we can kind of reuse this for the hip jack. So the, here's the interesting thing is calculating the overhang. This section stays exactly the same. So that 20.83, that's the same answer for our hip jack rafter because the overhang does not change. Now what does change is the line length. So we need to calculate the line length of the hip jack. In this case, it's not going from the ridge, it's from the hip, okay? Now we can reuse the, uh, the unit triangle, 10, 12, 15.62, that's the same because it is running like a common rafter. The run of our hip jack is not 141, it's now 14 inches. So we'll just kind of erase that, 14 inches. So we can go 14 times 15.62, I'll pull up the calculator, 14 times 15.62 divided by 12, okay? And we get 8.22, so 18, sorry, 18.22 inches. Uh, Let's just see if that's closer to 3 16 or to a quarter minus 18 times 16. So it is closer to 4 16 which would be closer to a quarter. So that's 18 and a quarter. So the total length of our hip jack would be 18.25 plus 20.83. That's our overhang equals. So. Thirty-nine point zero eight, so that's thirty-nine and one sixteenth. Okay, so that would be our layout from the basically from the hip all the way to the tail. But what we'd still want to do is lay out the distance from the hip to the uh, building, and then from the building to the tail. Right, so that's the twenty point eight three is is here twenty point eight three and 18.25.
So you can see that the, the projection is actually bigger than that first rafter. So everything else stays the same. The height above plate stays the same. We don't have to worry about total rise or actual ridge height or any of that stuff because the hip jack runs from the wall to the hip. So that would be our first one. Now, it is important to note that the layout for our hip jack is a little bit different. Um, where's my PowerPoint here? Is a little bit different than the regular common rafter because the hip jack, you can see, has a single cheek cut. It is cut on a 45 degree angle so that it meets the side of the hip. Now this is kind of simple because you've already done this with the hip rafter. So here's the hip jack layout, right? Your seat cut, your whole bird's mouth section is exactly the same as the common rafter. Your fascia is the same. We take off the full thickness, the inch and a half fascia typically. But at the top here, what we do is we will lay out. So we have our distance here and we have our distance here, our, our working points. But here, you see that the top of the hip jack rafter is very much like a hip rafter. So we have to shorten, step back, one half the thickness, uh, sorry, we're, we're gonna first step back the inch and a 16th because that is our hip rafter normally, if we're looking here, if this is an inch and a half thick, right? And we drew a line at 45 degrees, but we're only going halfway, same thing as when we calculated the shortening for our ridge, that becomes one and one sixteenth of an inch. Okay, so we subtract that. And then, like our hip rafter, we step forward and back one half the thickness of the hip, that three quarters of an inch, three quarters of an inch, and that allows us to decide whether we're gonna have a left hand or a right hand cheek cut. So. I would say that if this is the hip, this would be a left hand and this would be a right hand. But you can call it however you want. Depending on what side you cut, you'll get this hip jack or this hip jack. If we're making a symmetrical roof, basically that math that we just did is going to be the same for this hip jack and this one. Okay. The next thing we want to figure out, and I'll do this real quick, is the common difference. Right. So since the since the, uh, the tails are all gonna stay the same, if we figure out how long this distance is, so how far this changes, um, we can basically add this on. Now, we said that this is 16 inches, so the run of the common difference is also 16 inches. But depending on our roof slope, the line length, right? So the distance between the working points will grow just like the rafter will grow because it's like the hypotenuse number. So let's go back to our common rafter worksheet here, if I can find it. Okay, so in this case, we're gonna pretend like our run of common is 16 inches, okay? And we're gonna calculate it the same way, okay? So the run of common, we're just considering our stud spacing. So we have 16 times 15.62 divided by 12, okay? So here, our common difference, oh, look at that, I should have noticed that our projection is the same, okay? So our common difference is 20.83. We said the original, because it was 14 inches from the corner, the original hip jack was 18.25, basically. So what we could do, so we know the tails are all the same. So we could take the, this rafter will be 18.25 inches, and then we can go 18.25 plus 20.83, I think that's right. Yep, 20.83 equals. So now rafter number two is gonna be 39.08 eight, which is basically a 16th. Rafter number three plus 20.83 will be 59.91. And now if this continued, most calculators will let you do this, is just to keep hitting equals, equals, equals. And you'll start to get, you can just go down the line, depending on how many hip jacks you go, you can just keep going and keep adding on the same common difference over and over and over. So the common difference will just be basically be the distance between uh, working point one and working point two, but the tails will all stay the same. Anyways, guys, I hope you find this helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions. 
and uh, let's kick butt in the shop. Take care.